Darden Rice, welcome to TFNN. Hi, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing great. Well, with first off, welcome to TFNN. Appreciate you coming on. You have Thanks a big challenge. Me. You have a big challenge here. They're going for the mayor of St. Petersburg, Florida. Tell us what you're going to do when you're going to be mayor. Well, I'm so excited for the future of our city. I truly believe St. Petersburg is going to be one of the greatest cities of the 21st century. And we're going to get there by doubling down on what makes us special and authentic. And we've got a we've got some challenges ahead of us, but those challenges are also opportunities. Uh, Tropicana field redevelopment will certainly be uh, our next renaissance for the city with or without baseball. Of course, there's certain things about that project we just have to get right, including uh, making sure that it's uh, a part of the whole community and that we address what the black community lost there so many years ago. Um, but it's exciting. It's exciting. I've loved the last eight years on city council and I'm looking forward to continuing my service to the city that I love. And um, I think our I think our city is going to figure out how to do things like how to live and grow as a coastal city and, uh, you know, in a modern time where we have to deal with coastal flooding and uh, different environmental pressures. Uh, I know that we can lead the way in protecting our clean drinking water. And uh, I know that we can show that the challenges of rebuilding our infrastructure are also opportunities for an incredible job plan uh, to get our city ready for the next century. So I'm ready. Um, I'm so excited. I love this city. And uh, I think we just have a great future ahead of us. And when Darden talks about the, the redevelopment of the TROP, folks, okay, the TROP is 85 acres downtown, which, and no matter what city you're in, there's very few cities that have 85 acres that get developed. Uh, when they're talking about the aspect of the uh, black community, what had happened is that when the, the TROP came in, the bottom line, you know, you talk about years ago, you got uh, uh, eminent domain, so there, and, and it separates the city. Not that the city is not separated, folks, okay? The, but the bottom line is, is that like any other city, okay, you don't have to be a, a brain scientist to realize what has happened in the past in, in major cities in general. So let's talk a little bit about the aspect of, you know, we, we know that the, the, the TROP, either way, listen, that, that's going to get developed, okay? The real question is, is that what's going to happen there? When we talk about the aspect of um, South St. Pete, and, you know, you know, a few years ago, we had the younger kids, folks, like every other city, the bottom line is that, you know, we got a lot of the cars that are stolen. Now we have, there's, there's problems, and the, the problems of, of, have to do with, like, where is the balance between how... You, you basically come into the community and, you know, we basically bring down the violent level of the shootings, okay? And, yeah. and what can we do? That, I mean, I think everyone is saying, okay, what can we do here? Because we know that, you know, for all of us, you got to make it by a certain age, man. <laughs> That's what it seems like. And once you make it by the age, you're in good shape. But it seems like we have a little demographic there that is a problem right now. Well, I think going back to these opportunities with Tropicana Field Redevelopment, um, I'm going to be looking for some key attributes that I think will make that successful. And it needs to be the economic engine, not just for the city, but for the black community that once was the center of where it was originally located. And I think also we need to be super focused on how redevelopment can bring our city good paying jobs good paying jobs that lead to um, good careers, careers with dignity, um, and uh, offer more opportunities to everyone in our city that way. And I think that we need to make sure that whatever we do, we keep that special vibe that makes St. Pete St. Pete, that makes us authentic, that gives us our that special, unique identity that we have. And I think what wears away the identity uh, that we have is if we start to become a city where only uh, wealthy retirees can afford to live here. So as the next mayor, uh, you know, we don't get what we don't fight for. But as the next mayor, I'm going to fight for affordable housing and affordable 
uh, small business storefronts because that is the glue. That is the heartbeat of what makes St. Pete St. Pete. And I think it's just so important to keep our eyes on that as we face these like really incredible opportunities and challenges. And, and what happens, folks, and, and, and Pritchard, I'm prejudiced to St. Pete, folks. You, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you know that. But what happens in St. Pete is that we really do like each other in St. Pete. You know, every city, you know, I've been down here 25 years, but every city says, oh, we really like each other. Well, in St. Pete, we really do. <laughs> right? And I love the idea. So let's talk about small businesses, because what, what has happened in St. Pete, folks, is this. And picture this. You know, we do a financial program across the country. The bottom line, most of the time, it's bigger business. But it's small business that drives the United States of America. And the bottom line is that we have a lot of it in St. Pete. I've, I've watched Darden in particular. And I'm, I'm just so you know, I'm, I am prejudiced to Darden Rice also, okay? Even though I'm in the media, the bottom line is that I've seen her through the years care about people. That, that's the real bottom line. And you, you, I've never said that to you, Darden, but, I, you know, actually one of the first times I've ever seen you was either six or seven years ago, and this was at uh, actually a meeting, and it was just, it was just intriguing in general because there's there's a difference when someone actually cares about the aspect of what's going on, and in this particular case, it was in your district versus you know, and now we're talking about you know the the whole city. Yeah. Talk to me about the I young. First, we get the, the of course we get the small businesses, but let's let's talk about like preschool. Preschool, getting these young kids educated, you know, coming forward, because that's 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 the new generation that's coming up. Well, I tell you, my campaign, we've already been out, you know, knocking on over 10,000 doors, talking to people one on one and asking people what they care about and what they're most interested in. And I know there's a lot of support for my platform. And I'm one of the first mayoral candidates to ever make a push for universal pre-K and also uh, assistance for that first two years of community college and tech training. I think that uh, past mayors have done a good job uh, recognizing that the city does have a role to play with our education system. And don't get me wrong, I'm not running for school board, but we know there's a lot more that the city can do working in partnership with area employers and foundations to offer the type of support and service that our city needs. We want to thank Darden Rice for coming on. You can reach Darden folks at DardenRice.com. Have a great one. Have a safe one.